my big thought on this is, is the word synthesis because what's happening is a ton of stuff flowing in or flowing around the web in the form of tweets and Flickr photographs and blogs and so on. And what we lack is the means to synthesize it all. And in synthesizing, if you had, uh, for example, a bunch of reports coming in, it looked like something was happening. The process of synthesis is also the process of cleaning it up, mm -hmm. of turning it into something coherent, consistent, meaningful, turning data into information, if you like. And that process has to happen very quickly. It's the process that traditionally has been done by the responsible agencies, by um, Forest Service, et cetera. Um, but in this new world where the amount of information is just overwhelming, it's impossible for the regular process to work because you just don't have time. So what we have to do is build the kinds of technologies that will synthesize this stuff and produce useful output. Um, there's a lot of uh, interesting ways of doing that and a lot of interesting research going on. Um, but hopefully when we're finished, what we'll have is a means to turn a whole lot of just stuff into a complete picture, a situation awareness, if you like. So a research challenge that I've been working on for a number of years is the data quality issue. And basically it comes down to how do you know if a purported fact is likely to be true, right? So somebody says, uh, my house is on fire. Um, how do we assess that? Um, well, there's various ways. And uh, we can focus on you. And if you are a responsible citizen and have a record of providing reliable information, then that conveys an element of trust. Or if a government agency says your house is on fire, um, similarly, we, we would trust that. Right? Um, and another way is by saying, to what extent is it possible for your house to be on fire? Um, houses don't randomly burn. Um, so what else do we know? And in the world of the web, um, usually we know a lot else. Um, we know something about your street. We know something about um, how close you are to uh, brush. Um, we know all sorts of factors um, which may, um, may allow us to put some probabilities on, on whether what you say is likely to be true. And so this general approach um, turns out to be, I think, a pretty promising way of deciding what is likely to be true and what's not and putting probabilities on things. And um, essentially there are three mechanisms. There's the, the social mechanism that says, do we trust you? And uh, are you part of a social, of a community that can be trusted? What are your credentials? Right, that's one. Um, a second is the crowd mechanism. So if yours is an isolated report, we're not gonna give it much credibility, but if somebody down the street also says, oh, that person's house is on fire. Um, that gives it some additional weight. So that's the crowdsourcing mechanism, the crowd, the wisdom of the crowd, reinforcing the original um, comment. And then the third is really what I'm most interested in, which is when all the other information comes into play and you say, okay, what do we know about how the geographic world is basically constructed? And is this comment consistent with that. So we know, for example, that uh, things generally are consistent with their context. And they're also consistent with other things that are known about that particular location. So that's the one I'm most interested in. I'm interested in bringing all that together, turning it into a set of rules that can be used to what I would call triage purported facts. And that can be done automatically. So the great advantage of that is you can do it really quickly. And so that, in a sense, solves the problem of assessing the quality of geographic information in an emergency situation.